Hi everybody, in today's video I'm going to go over ASRock's B550 Phantom Gaming 4 AC motherboard. This is an ATX motherboard and it's the wireless capable version. This motherboard has an MSRP of $124.99 and is the price I paid for earlier this year. But at the time of filming I have seen it on sale new at Amazon priced anywhere from $89.99 to $109.99. The non-wireless version can be bought for anywhere between $79.99 to $99.99 and its original MSRP is around $104. It's good to see prices have come down on B550 boards, and this price disparity also teaches us to click the new and use button, as you may just save even more money. It goes without saying, of course, if you don't need the wireless internet, then go for the cheaper version, as you can always add that later. Now, I'm going to try something different today. If you've seen my other motherboard videos, you know I like to do a deep dive into everything about the motherboard, and these videos also tend to be rather long. Today, however, I want to try to do a speedier overview that, while fast, still gives you enough details about the board to make an informed decision on whether or not to buy it. Without further ado, let's get started. Welcome to the middle of nowhere. Here's what you get with the Phantom Gaming 4 AC motherboard. Upon opening the box, you'll see all the goodies. You've got two SATA 3 cables, your I.O. shield, your what ASRock refers to as its quick installation guide, although this looks like it's a full fat manual. Um, looks like it is. Is it in multiple languages? Yes, it is. Uh, it should have enough information to really help you get to know the motherboard, and they also have this online in PDF format. You get a coaster that also serves as a driver disc and it looks like you get a nifty little sticker there as rock powered you get your two wi-fi antennas and we'll go over the wi-fi module more in depth later and then final your final accessory is a m.2 screw underneath the cardboard we get our motherboard and it is it is in an anti-static bag which is nice Looks like it's also got some extra foam padding, so that's good too. And then here's your motherboard. As for looks, the motherboard has a gray and black aesthetic. There are some angled lines going from one end of the board to the other, giving that kind of aggressive feel. There is no integrated I.O. shield, as I already showed you the separate one when unboxing. And the single VRM and chipset heat sinks are both silver, or kind of like a dark gunmetal gray color almost. On the chipset is also the Phantom Gaming, or PG, logo. And finally, there does not seem to be any onboard RGB lighting. As previously mentioned, the Phantom Gaming 4 motherboard is an ATX motherboard, so be sure you buy a case that it will fit in. When it comes to CPU support, you can install a 5000, 3000, 5000G, 4000G, or 3000G series CPU. Now I know on the web product website it, does, it says it doesn't support the 32 or 3400G, but when looking at the CPU support, those two CPUs come up as being supported as of a later BIOS. If you buy this motherboard for a 5000 series CPU and you do not see a 5000 series CPU ready sticker on it, you'll need to update the BIOS, which may prove difficult if you don't have a 3000 series CPU available as there is no BIOS flashback on this motherboard. For memory support, you can install up to 128 gigs of RAM. The Phantom Gaming 4 supports a variety of RAM speeds with a max speed of 4733. Maximum speed, of course, also depends on which CPU you use. There's also support for ECC memory, and this is only if you use AMD's Pro line of CPUs. When it comes to installing a memory kit, the only the top side of the RAM slot has a, a little toggle to be able to open it up. The bottom does not. If you want dual channel memory support, you want to install it in the second and fourth slots away from the CPU. There are a total of four PCI slots on this motherboard. You have two by 16 length slots and two by one length slots. The top slot is also reinforced by some metal for the heavier graphics cards, and this is where you'll put your graphics card. It is by 16 in length and speed. So if you put it in this one, you're gonna basically hamstring your GPU power and it might not even work. The second by 16 slot is only by four in speed. This top slot can be PCIe 4.0 or 3.0 depending on which CPU you use, whereas the other three slots are all PCIe 3.0. When it comes to RGB support, you'll find four total headers, two RGB and two addressable RGB. You have one of each at the top of the motherboard and at the bottom. So the white is your four pin RGB and the kind of the gray black header is your um, three pin ARGB. 
One of the nice things for this being a budget board is that it has a total of six fan headers. You'll find two for the CPU and water pump, and then the other four are either chassis fan headers or for water pump. You have your CPU, dedicated CPU fan header here, the C second CPU optional is right here essentially, or your pump, and then you have a, another chassis header here, and two here, and one here. When it comes to storage devices, you can plug up to four SATA 3 storage devices into this motherboard. And you also have access to uh, one M.2 slot here. This is PCIe 4.0 capable. It accepts both NVMe PCIe drives as well as SATA drives. There's also RAID support for 0, 1, and 10 as well. The Phantom Gaming 4 AC has loads of internal headers, some of which we've already gone over. In addition to the RGB and fan headers, here's what's also available. You get two USB 2.0 headers right in the middle of the board at the bottom. You get on the side one USB 3.2 Gen 1 header for the front of your case. The lower left hand side you have your HD audio port for your front audio for the microphone and headphones there. You have a COM port. You have a SPI TPM module header. Let me interrupt myself for a moment. When I was further looking at the motherboard, I spotted a second TPM header by the CPU and BIOS chip. This confused me greatly, and after looking at the manual for the TPM, I noticed it completely disregarded the bottom connector. Apparently, the bottom header is not where you plug in the TPM module. Rather, you'll use the header in the center of the board by the CPU. This is a 14-1 pin or 13-pin connector for the TPM SPI module. For those interested in TPM, I have a basic overview video of what a trusted platform module does, and if you want a TPM specifically for this motherboard, I've put a link in the description so you know what to look for when shopping. Skipping our RGB and fan ports and then our USB 2.0, next to that we have a clear CMOS header. Again, another fan port. Here we have our power LED and speaker header, and then finally we have our front panel connectors. As for power connectors, you have your standard 24-pin motherboard connector, and for the CPU, you have both an 8-pin and 4-pin power connector. You're going to just plug in the 8-pin if you have a CPU that you one doesn't need a lot of power and two that you don't intend to overclock. You really only need to plug in both if you do some extreme overclocking. It's kind of interesting considering this motherboard doesn't have a very robust power delivery compared to higher end B550 motherboards that it would have two CPU power connections. Finally, as this is a budget motherboard, it goes without saying that there are zero onboard buttons, switches, or even a troubleshooting LED Q code reader. Having said that, there are four LEDs right here that have different colors that I've gone over in other motherboards. You have it for your CPU, your RAM, your VGA, and of course, boot. For onboard audio, ASRock is using the Realtek ALC 1200 audio codec. This has support for 7.1 channel surround sound, Blu-ray audio, surge protection, and there's PCB shielding and individual PCB layers for right and left audio channels. This will help to isolate noise. There's also support for Nehemic audio, and you'll see that separation right here, just like I've shown on almost every other motherboard. Now bouncing back to the wireless feature of this motherboard, you can see that there is a wireless module plugged into an M.2 slot. This is specifically for the Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi module is an Intel 802.11ac module that covers the 802.11a, b, g, n, and ac spectrum with dual band support for 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. This gives you an effective wireless connection of up to 433 megabits per second. It also has support for Bluetooth 4.2. Keep in mind that Bluetooth 5.2 is the latest standard, so if you really need the best wireless experience, my suggestion would be to go with a regular, non-wireless capable Phantom Gaming because this module slot is still present and there's still holes for antenna as well on the rear IO. Then you can go ahead and go shopping for the latest uh, wireless module that has the support for AX wireless as well as Bluetooth 5.2. The type of module that you want is a 2230, this is, refers to the length, and make sure also that it is an E key type. When it comes to power delivery we have an 8 phase power delivery on this motherboard and only a heat sink that covers the six phases on the CPU side of things. So that means the other two are right over here. I'm kind of uh, disappointed that there isn't a heat sink that covers the entirety of the power delivery, but hopefully with good uh, air cooling in your case, the VRMs won't get terribly too hot. 
As this is more of a budget motherboard, don't expect too much of a robust rear I.O. But what you do get is the following. You have six USB 3.2 Gen 1 USB ports. For whatever reason, you have a PS2 port for a keyboard or a mouse. You have your two Wi-Fi antenna that are connected to the module, which we already covered. You have an HDMI port that is capable of HDMI 2.1 with a max resolution of up to 4K at 60 Hz. You have a gigabit ethernet, no 2.5 gigabit on this motherboard. It uses the Realtek RTL 8111H solution. And then finally, you have your three audio ports, one for line in, front speaker, and microphone. And that's it for the rear IO, really simple. Because there is no BIOS flashback button, you'll want to make sure the BIOS included with the motherboard can support your CPU, especially if you're going to use a Ryzen 5000 or 5000G series CPU. As you can see here, I have BIOS version P1.20 installed as it is printed on the BIOS chip. If we look up this BIOS version on Azeroth's website, we can see it supports Ryzen 5000 series CPUs, but not necessarily 5000G series or some of the older CPUs. To get that support, I'd have to update the BIOS and you'll probably need to do the same as well. To figure out whether or not you need to update the BIOS in order to use the CPU you have chosen for your PC build, check the BIOS chip to see if it's printed there, as I did for the Phantom Gaming 4, or it might be printed somewhere else on the front or back of the motherboard. Additionally, check the manual and even the box where the sticker is that has the product serial number. Finally, you may be able to find out which BIOS is installed on your motherboard on the product website. That about covers it. Hopefully I was able to go over the standout features of the ASRock B550 Phantom Gaming 4 AC, and quickly too. Based on current prices, this is definitely a motherboard to look out for, as it provides enough good features for budget builders without breaking the bank. However, if you're unable to find it new at the $89 or $109.99 prices mentioned earlier, consider saving an extra $45 over the next couple of weeks and buy the MSI B550A Pro instead. While it doesn't have Wi-Fi, it has more features like two M.2 slots, USB Type-C ports for the front and back, a BIOS flashback button, and a more robust power delivery and heatsink. However, if you just can't wait, can't slot any more money into your motherboard budget for your PC build, or you're just plain unwilling to save more money, then the ASRock B550 Phantom 4 Gaming AC or the non-AC version is a decent board with good bang for the buck features. And that's all I have to say about the ASRock B550 Phantom Gaming 4, one more time, AC motherboard. Thanks for watching everybody. If you've enjoyed this video, hit that like button and share any questions or comments you have down below. Show your support for the channel by clicking subscribe and don't forget to hit that notifications icon so you don't miss out on any future content. All of your support has been greatly appreciated as this channel has grown and grown over this year and I'm super happy about it. I'm Seth and I'll see you next time in the middle of nowhere.